All right, everyone, when I think of honest people, I think of George W. Bush. You know, the man who killed half a million civilians in a mad dash to find WMDs that didn't exist, depose a dictator who was, you know, somewhat legitimately elected as maybe opposed to our theocratic monarchic buddies in Saudi Arabia that, you know, told us it was a good idea to invade in the first place. I think of George W. Bush when I think of great U.S. presidents. You know, he, he made the country great again by running us into the ground with debt, starting several wars on credit, pissing away our diplomatic situation, and generally causing the whole world to implode, to the point where evangelicals who were worried about the end times were openly holding court with far leftists who basically believed the same thing at the time. No, uh, I don't think so. Now, now George W., Little W himself, who's looking more and more like a chimpanzee, uh, has come out and said, oh, Russia definitely meddled in the U.S. election. Now, can I ask you one very important thing? How exactly is George W uh, privy to that information, considering the fact that he's not talking to the intel community, or he's not legally supposed to be? He's not supposed to have access to anything substantially classified. He's an ex-president. He's not the sitting president of the United States. He's not in political office. Uh, are there any Bushes that are in a high political office? Like, is Jeb still governor uh, uh, right now, or did he quit being governor to run, and now he's screwed? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. George W. doesn't know what he's talking about, or rather, he knows he's just lying. Now, there is one aside, there is one way he could technically be telling the truth. This would be really funny. Imagine that he's right, but it was actually the Clintons that got Russia's help, because it does seem, according to what Campbell is saying, uh, through the, the FBI informant involved with the Uranium One uh, discourse to Congress. According to the three written testimonies he gave before various chunks of Congress, uh, there was Russian involvement in the election, but it essentially boiled down to people in Moscow giving several million bucks to the Clinton Foundation, knowing full well that it would secure the Uranium One deal, and that money being used for campaign cash. Now, if that's the case, yeah, then I guess George W. accidentally is right, but I think we all know what he's intoning because he's a never-Trumper. Now, you know, you've got George Herbert Walker was talking to Carolyn Kennedy and confirmed he voted for Clinton. That's funny. George W. never endorsed Trump, although, honestly, I think Trump doesn't want him to endorse his platform. I think Trump is glad that Bush hates him. Um, because the Bushes represent basically everything wrong with the last and now dying paradigm. Proxy war, lots of lying, government opacity, um, you know, Cold War posturing. It begins with, with the Georgia situation, honestly, when, when W is in office. It continues through Obama, but Obama is basically just, you know, Bush with a D after his name, minus 10 years of age, and a little bit more coherent. There's really no difference. Globalism interventionism overseas and, you know, economic intervention, uh, you know, domestically. And so George W. represents basically everything negative about U.S. politics. Uh, I'm struggling to think of any real redeeming features of his presidency. I'm struggling to think of a single thing that George W. did that, that actually uh, was uh, good for the nation. Can you think of anything? I guess he, he increased our diplomatic ties with a few African nations. Oddly enough, he was actually, uh, of all the presidents we've had, he sent the most aid to the continent of Africa. Now, I wonder if people uh, realize that a lot of people don't know. That or maybe his marine, uh, you know, uh, nature preserve there where he said that fish and people could coexist. Yeah, I guess he recognized his dream. He lived his dream. His dream was to destroy several countries but to bring peace between mankind and, and the aquatic environment. So I guess he succeeded at that. I'm uh, not seeing that as a great redeeming facet, though, of his presidency. And when he comes out and says, Russia meddled with our election first, how the fuck would you know? You're not reading top secret reports. You're an ex-president. You haven't been in that office for a long time. The current president won't give you the light of day or listen to you. Probably a good thing. If Trump listened to Bush, we'd be at war in Iran probably right now. We'd have boots on the ground in Syria. We'd probably be marching into Yemen. We'd look like the fucking French Foreign Legion in the, in the uh, late 1800s or something. We'd look like a colonial power, even more than we did under W's presidency. People were already a little mystified at how many uh, large numbers of troops we had stationed in various places. So in W, who sends people off to go get slaughtered uh, and come back with PTSD or missing a finger or a leg if they're lucky, uh, and probably in a casket if they're not, when George W. says something, 
My general assumption is it's full of shit. Because he's full of shit. He's a shitty human being. The Bush family are traitors to this country. Uh, look at their response after Katrina. Look how George W. responded for several days is basically absent. And then he comes and says, hey, hey, I made an oopsie. Sorry that I caused hundreds of people to die and there were corpses floating down the streets. Sorry the levees broke and my people were nowhere to be found. And then the first thing we did was disarm a bunch of people. Hey, hey, I made an oopsie. It's like cute little Bush, a little manlet that he is. He shits on the floor of the Oval Office and people just adore him. They just think it's cute. That appears to, by the way, be the way that the, uh, the lamestream media now treats him. They don't talk about anymore. When Bush speaks, they don't remind people, hey, this is the warmongering profiteer who killed half a million people. This is the dude who got the ball rolling on our massive debt. This is the dude who pissed away half of our alliances in Europe. This is the dude who restarted the Cold War over the Georgian issue and a diplomatic crisis there that probably wouldn't have escalated beyond that very local theater had Bush not gotten directly involved with Vladimir at the time. They don't want to remind people of that bullshit. They don't want to remind people of these things. They want to portray Bush as a kindly presidential figure as opposed to evil, you know, bloated Trump, basically. <laughs> That's what they're so fixated on that, that they're willing to exonerate some of the worst war crimes that we've seen in American history, which all happened under George W. Oh, Abu Ghraib, what's that? It never existed, they would say. It doesn't matter. Black sites? Who cares about those? Torture? Yeah, it's okay. It's all right to waterboard people. We can forgive that as long as Trump doesn't do it. You know, by the way, when Trump spoke about it, they didn't talk about Bush then either. A bunch of morons. Bush is a moron too. He's not a moron in the sense of being unintelligent. Don't get me wrong. I always maintained George W. is not a stupid man. He's academically trained. He's an evil man. Way well, he plays dumb, but he's still stupid when it comes to strategy in many ways. It's obvious. He doesn't have the intelligence to lead a nation. Cheney was largely in charge. Uh, this was an open joke. Like even even on 9/11, people were saying, "Oh, I guess he's talking to Dick Cheney right now." And lo and behold, the first thing he did, he talked to his daddy. You know, someone who was in the CIA. <laughs> Obviously, some policy chops there. Not necessarily benevolent, but knew what he was doing more than W. He talks to Daddy Bush and Dick Cheney. He asked them what he should be doing. Oh shit, something bad's happening. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Oh shit, you know, this is gonna be a PR disaster. We got caught with our pants down around our ankles taking a shit. Uh, it's not gonna look good. Yeah, and magically, because he makes a halfway coherent speech for the one time in his fucking presidency, his approval skyrockets for a few months before it recedes back down to more proper levels. His approval should have hit 0%. People should have been asking why the hell it happened in the first place. Nobody thought to at the time, I guess. It was, it was Os Osama acted alone. It wasn't state-sponsored. Just ignore the fact that we redacted so much of the 9-11 report, says W. No, nope, no states involved. Just, just a bunch of ragtag rebels that we accidentally armed back in the 1970s and 80s. Don't look at it any deeper, folks. We don't want you to. It's sort of like the don't read the WikiLeaks stuff. It's illegal that came from CNN. There's, when people tell you not to look too deep into something and that you're a tinfoil hatter if you do... You need to be looking deeper into it, usually. George W. Ooh, the Russians meddled in our election. No, they didn't. No, if you're saying that it happened, it almost certainly didn't. Unless it happened in behalf of Clinton. That's always a possibility. A vague possibility. I don't even necessarily believe that. Look, Russia as a state actor meddling is different from, hey, some Russian oligarchs with a lot of money paid Clinton to secure uranium because they wanted to make a boatload of cash. That's a different, that's not necessarily the Kremlin doing that, it's Russians. Just like Russians uh, uh, invested into Trump's properties when he was a private citizen, Vladimir Putin, as far as I know, n never did. The Russian state never invested in Trump. Uh, Russian billionaires might have. Then again, so did British billionaires, so did Australian investors. Uh, they'd be crazy not to, because he was making money for them at the time. Like, oh, we can get a 50% return in a single year. Yeah, we're gonna invest, no shit. You know, don't mind Atlantic City. That was, a, that was the one that didn't quite make it. That was the unloved stepchild. Uh, yeah, no, George, George W. And he gets taken seriously when he says this sort of stupid shit. Oh yeah, the Russians met on the election. All of a sudden, George W. that was a laughingstock for the last two years of his presidency, nobody believed a word he said. And rightfully so, not without good reason, because he had shown he wasn't to be trusted. 
All of a sudden they trust him now because he, he does the cute thing. Like, remember at the inauguration when he pretended he couldn't even put on a fucking raincoat? And he just sat there grinning and staring at the camera with that shit-eating monkey grin that he always does? You remember that? No, you probably don't because a lot of people didn't want to talk about that either. Maybe he's just fucking demented. Maybe he's demented enough he believes the shit that he spews. No, I don't believe it one bit. That's about all. Peace out.